Welcome everyone to another video which is a part of broadening of spectral line series. In the previous video, we discussed what is collision broadening, why does this happen. We also observed how pressure and temperature when increased, they result in multiple collisions among atoms and which further result in premature transition of atom from one level to another and thus the photon which is emitted is having a different characteristic. It's no longer the same photon which would have been transmitted when atom transits from one level to another when alone, when it is not hit or collided by any other atom. Today we are going to derive the expression of line width again for collision broadening. The way we did for natural broadening, same way we are going to do for collision broadening. So let's start. Once again, just like natural broadening, we are going to consider an electric field vector of radiation. So if E is the electric field vector of radiation at instant t. Whatever we study, we study in terms of the fields these atoms generate because sometimes we often say that electrons make transition, they are involved and when we talk of energy levels, so these electric fields are always there and we always talk in terms of these fields. The simplest form would be E is equal to E naught, E raised to power minus eta omega naught T. The simplest form where E naught is the amplitude, omega naught is again the natural angular frequency and T is the time. Now large number of atoms, they are involved. When we talk of system like lasers or any sample we are talking of, we are not talking of just one atom. There would be large number of atoms. And if the pressure is high or temperature is high, then there would be collisions. So now large number of atoms, they would be colliding in random way and each atom would experience changes in phase which gives rise to broadening. Now what we are going to do, the way we did in natural broadening, we have to express the E omega omega naught in terms of Fourier transform. So we will use that and we are considering that this Tc is the time between collisions. So here I'm just going to mention that Tc is the time between collisions. What does this signify? This is simply how much time does the atom has on its own when it is not being hit by any other atom. So it means Tc is the time interval when atom is going on its own. Once this Tc is over, it will be hit by any other atom. Now E omega omega naught. Omega naught, we know this is natural angular frequency which corresponds to the central frequency. This will always be there. We will get the largest spike, the longest line that we will obtain in the spectrum would correspond to omega naught. But there is broadening. We would see the broadening of spectral line. So what other frequencies would be involved? We have to check. That's why we are going to include this omega here. And if we are writing down this expression E for omega and omega naught, so we have to change this expression as well. We have to modify this expression. How we are going to modify? We have to introduce omega. Where we can introduce? We can introduce here because we have the exponential term. 
let's see how we are going to do it. We have 1 upon 2 pi because it is a Fourier transform. So just remember this is, we have applied Fourier transform here. E naught would be there as it is. E raised to the power minus iota because whenever we have to introduce this angular frequency term, it will always go along with the iota with exponent. So e raised to the power minus iota omega naught we have here. Now we are going to introduce this plus iota omega. T is there and now since this is Fourier transform and we are having the integral so, we have to mention the variable with respect to which integration would take place. So, what we can write now is 1 upon 2 pi 0 to Tc e naught e raised to the power iota omega minus omega naught. This is the standard expression that we try to obtain dt. E naught is just the amplitude is just a number. It's a constant thing. We can bring it outside the integral. E naught upon 2 pi 0 to Tc e raised to power iota omega minus omega naught T dt. Whatever changes are occurring in angular frequency, the change is exponential and that's why we always include these quantities, the angular frequency term with the exponent, raised to the power exponent. Exponent means something which is not following a linear track. In fact, if it's increasing or decreasing, it's just the number is increasing with time. It's not a constant quantity. If we are talking of like here, I omega, I out omega, that means this value of frequency, angular frequency is increasing with time. The moment if it is number 2, then it will be 4, then 6, and then 10, then, then 20, then 40, 60, and so on. With time, the growth is not constant. In fact, it is increasing. It's multiplying. It's increasing by many numbers. Now you can see here, this is the integral. We have to just solve it. This is a simple exponent term. And the integration of an exponential term is term as it is upon this thing, whatever is magnitude. We have to check because we are integrating with respect to dt. So whatever is the magnitude or the component of this t that will come in the denominator. So component is this and 0 to tc because we have not substituted the values yet. Now let's substitute the values. What do we get? Now I'm going to use square brackets as I'm substituting the values. The denominator remains the same. And here, E iota omega minus omega naught Tc and minus E iota omega minus omega naught 0. This implies E raised to power upon 2 pi. This would remain as it is. We can't solve it further. But here, this is e raised to power iota omega minus omega naught into 0. So anything multiplied by 0, 0. And we know that e raised to power 0 is 1. So here we will get 1. And denominator as it is. We are done with e omega omega naught. We have got the expression. Now we have to find the intensity distribution because ultimately whatever we ob obtain in the spectrum that is the frequency versus intensity. So intensity distribution almost the steps are same 
the way we are going to proceed is just similar the way we did in natural broadening so intensity distribution proportional to v square that means now we need to square this term as we have to obtain now we are going to obtain i omega omega now so this would be the square of this thing but here you can see we again are having this iota term a complex number so we have to take this thing in care in mind whenever we are solving so we get e upon 2 pi whole square and we have to find the magnitude as i mentioned earlier whenever we are having any complex number then only squaring won't give us the result what we need to find in such situations when intensity distribution is proportional to square of something as we say intensity square of amplitude so we have to square but in case of complex number squaring alone won't help in reality we have to find the magnitude so either what we do is first we square and then find the magnitude the way we did in natural broadening in the previous to previous the the natural broadening derivation video what we did was we first squared the complex number we had we were having complex number in the denominator so we just squared it and then we found the magnitude because whenever you have complex number and iota is involved mere squaring only squaring won't give you answer because again we will get one term with iota so the only solution to remove iota is to find the magnitude so there we first squared and then found the magnitude now we're here what we can do is this is e iota term and we can use trigonometry here that would help us in solving so what we need to do is we have to square the magnitude what we want is we need to square and we need to find magnitude but in natural broadening case we squared first and then found the magnitude here what we are going to do is since we are having e raised to power iota term we can use trigonometry trigonometry can help us to get a simpler term so first we will find the magnitude and then we'll square it both way answer will be the same but if we square it first and then find the magnitude things would get complex we don't want that so here first magnitude then square what we can do first just write down the term as it is now we have to solve this thing one more thing here that this magnitude whenever we say we are finding the magnitude we put these bars and this also means that if anything is negative that would turn out to be positive this thing if you remember this is like this so magnitude also means that we have to neglect the negative terms here you can see we are having iota if we will square iota we will get minus 1 but since we have put these bars here that means whatever is getting negative it has to be positive so we are simply now what i am going to do is i know i square i need not to introduce it into the calculation because it will only complex it i want to make my calculation as simpler as i can so if i know the value of iota square why not just put it and get rid of this iota i know iota square is minus 1 but we also are since we are finding the magnitude and this is sort of symbol for magnitude the bars and they also tell that if anything is negative inside that will be positive so i'm considering here that this iota square gives us minus 1 and when it comes out we are only left with positive quantity so now i have just e iota omega minus omega not 
DC minus 1 upon omega minus omega naught. This is the simplest case. We have at least we have removed one iota. We have gotten rid of this. Now let's see how we will deal with this iota present here. This iota. Let's mark this as 1 and just try to solve it in the next. Here this term is not a complex one. There is no iota. We can bring it outside because here it's not negative. It is positive. So magnitude would give us the same value. And on squaring we will get the squared of this term. So we can bring this outside as well. Now we have bar only in the numerator. This thing will square. Next. Let's use trigonometry here. We have one trigonometry formula that E iota theta is cos theta plus iota sin theta. We are going to use this here. E naught square upon 4 pi square and here cos if this is our theta that means cos omega minus omega naught dc plus iota sine omega minus omega naught dc minus 1 and we have the square here and in the denominator we have omega minus omega naught whole square. One more thing that you should remember is whenever we say magnitude of anything, if it is A plus iota B, then that is square root of the square of these components. Here we have to find magnitude and then we have to square it. So, if we will find the magnitude, we will get the quantity in square root. That means, what do we get? E naught square upon 4 pi square. Now, for magnitude, see, this is A square plus B square. So, first, what we can do is, there is one, we can combine the terms which are without iota and those which are having iota. Let's see, first combine these terms. We get cos omega minus omega naught Tc minus 1 as one particular quantity plus iota sine omega minus omega naught Tc as another quantity. And here we have the bar and this omega minus omega naught whole square. Now see. E naught square, 4 pi square. We have obtained our components. We have to find the magnitude now. Magnitude says we have to take the square root. Plus, don't forget, here we have the square as well. Because we have to square it as well. Find the magnitude and square it. So, first I am writing down the magnitude. How will I write? This becomes cos omega minus omega naught tc minus 1 whole square plus sine omega minus omega naught tc whole square and then whole square of this thing after that, this as it is in the denominator. Now let's, so here we are having a square root and then square. If we have some quantity, say x, and we are taking the square root and then we are squaring it as well, we will get x itself. Or I should better uh, show it as this. Now this 
x square square root would give us this thing and again we get x square so anything square root of anything and then squared is the same thing so i can remove this square root and this square will also be gone and i can simply write this term so we have now e naught square upon 4 pi square then now we can use square brackets because we have used the magnitude and squared it as well cos omega minus omega naught pc minus 1 whole square plus sin sin omega minus omega naught pc whole square so that becomes sin square omega minus omega naught pc upon omega minus omega naught whole square now you can see here we have no iota term at all now the task is to simply solve it this is a trigonometric ratio and we have to use algebra as well this seems like this quantity seems like a minus b whole square so let's do that b naught square on 4 pi square cos square omega minus omega naught pc plus 1 minus 2 cos omega minus omega naught pc and plus sine square omega minus omega naught pc let me just mark here that this portion is just the side part and omega minus omega naught as it is in the denominator here we have used a minus b whole square expansion which says a square plus b square minus 2ab we have mentioned it once again we have here cos square omega minus omega naught pc and here we have sine square omega minus omega naught pc and we have one more trigonometric formula which says that cos square theta plus sine square theta is 1 so we can simply substitute 1 here let's do that and what do we get we get e naught square upon 4 pi square this term becomes 1, so 1 plus 1, this one, minus 2 cos omega minus omega naught dc upon omega minus omega naught whole square. This further gives us e naught square upon 4 pi square, 2 minus 2 cos omega minus omega naught dc upon omega minus omega naught whole square we can take this two as common e naught square 4 pi square 2 1 minus cos omega minus omega naught pc and then we have omega minus omega naught whole square in the denominator once again we are going to use another trigonometric formula which says 1 minus cos theta is equal to 2 sine square theta by 2. So this is also 1 minus cos this whole thing this is whole theta. So let's use this formula. On using this we get E naught square. 4 pi square 2 we already have and then this would give us 2 sine square omega minus omega naught pc by 2 okay, theta by 2 we can write here pc by 2 and then omega minus omega naught whole square as it is in the denominator 2 2 4 this can cancel here and we are left with e naught square upon pi square 
साइन स्क्वायर ओमेगा माइनस ओमेगा नॉट टी सी बाय टू अपॉन ओमेगा माइनस ओमेगा नॉट होल स्क्वायर सो दिस इज आर क्वेश्चन नंबर टू दैट वी हैव ऑप्टेन एंड व्हाट वाज दिस दिस वाज आई ओमेगा ओमेगा we have found in intensity and next step would be to find line shape function which is g omega omega not we always start with e omega omega not then we use the formula that intensity is proportional to e square and then we find e omega omega not and after that we will find g omega omega not so the steps used are almost the same here one more thing that we are going to use now is that all the atoms we are saying that pc is the time between collisions all atoms would be having different values of tc so let me write down here since atoms will have different values of tc we are saying pc is the time between collision so probability of collision between time say t and t plus dt we can write it as 1 upon tc like what is probability that is number of favorable outcome upon total possible outcomes here we are saying that tc is the time the total time between collision that an atom has that any atom has we are just taking tc as to be a general time for all atoms between the collision so 1 upon tc tc in the denominator and then numerator is having the just the favorable outcomes that e is from minus t by tc that means very small possibility small number of outcome that are possible that within that time actually the time interval we are considering here is dt so what is the probability of collision between that particular time whatever the time is has to be taken in account with respect to tc because tc is the time between collision that we have taken we are going to use this probability in a formula and here when we write intensity distribution now we will arrange it or average it over all possible values of time if we average this intensity distribution over all possible values of time of collision from 0 to infinity we have to include this probability now our intensity distribution becomes this i omega into p dt in 0 to infinity this i omega nothing else but the same term and p dt is this value now we are averaging over all possible values of time of collision from 0 to infinity and here i have mentioned i omega the only thing that we will change now when we are using this function is as we are averaging for all values of time from 0 to infinity instead of using this tc we would be using t so that we can integrate over range of time as tc is simply the time between collision but we have to see and different atoms have different times of collision and we have to see the probability of collision between a particular time interval like what is the probability of collision for all sort of atoms between a particular time interval so that and for that particular time interval we have found this probability but we don't want only one particular time interval we want from the beginning till the end everything all the possibility and all the distribution that we will get from the beginning the the moment lamp is on and we are getting the spectra till the lamp is off so for for all the time we have to integrate from 0 to infinity so this is that's why we are doing it we want to know the value throughout and that's why here 
this TC. If we will use TC, then that would stay fixed for this particular time of collision. We don't want that. We want this whole quantity to come into calculation. Thus, the only difference, the only change I'm going to make here is that instead of using TC, we are going to use T so that we can integrate. Since integration is over DT, that's why we have to use here this thing. This upon omega minus omega naught square. Then the probability part comes, which is 1 upon Tc e raised to power minus T by Tc dt. Now, this is the whole quantity that we have to solve. This particular one. Let this be 3. And this is very important. Now, we have to solve this complete quantity. As we want. That this whole quantity which we were considering for, for TC, that should also come into calculation. If we write TC here, then you know we are integrating with respect to T. Then this will not take part in the calculation. See, this is, this quantity is constant, this is constant, this is constant. And if we are using TC here, this will also be constant. So, what we will be dealing with is just PDT, only the probability. No, that doesn't make sense. Okay, we have got this value because we chose TC to be the time. We chose this value to be for the time between collision and TC is the time between collision. We found this value for that. But now we are integrating from 0 to infinity. We want to integrate it. We want to know whatever is going to happen between that time. The moment lamp is on till the lamp is switched off. That's why instead of using TC, we are going to use T here so that it can take part in the calculation. Now, this is the main thing which are going, we are going to use. There are a few constant quantities. So, we have to take them outside the integral so that we can actually see what is left for the integration. E naught square is constant. Pi square is constant. In fact, then here this will take part. This will also take part because we have T here and T here as well. What else? TC. TC constant term will not take part and then this thing. So here 1 upon omega minus omega naught whole square tc. All these come outside the integral and we are left with sine square omega minus omega naught t by 2 and e raised to power minus t by tc dt inside the integral. Again we have to use the formula from integration and trigonometry also. Whenever we have terms like this in the integral, see here we have sine square and this exponent term. Solving both these terms simultaneously within an integral is not easy. We have to modify this term. Because if you keep this as it is, there is no way you are going to obtain any value or there is no way you are going to just come out of this integral. It's not possible. What I'm going to do here is, again, I'm going to use the trigonometric formula which says 2 sine square theta by 2 is 1 minus cos theta. This something looks like sine square theta by 2. Sine square theta by 2 becomes 1 minus cos theta by 2. We can use this thing here. This becomes 0 to infinity, 1 minus cos omega minus omega naught t. Okay, now because this is theta by 2 and this is simply theta upon 2 
and then E minus T by TC dt. This 1 by 2, we can bring it outside. So E naught square upon 2 pi square, 1 upon omega minus omega naught square and TC as it is. And now we have 1 minus cos omega minus omega naught T this whole quantity being multiplied by e raised by minus t by tc dt. What next? e naught square, 2 pi square, 1 upon omega minus omega naught whole square tc, 0 to infinity. Now this will get multiplied. So first we get e minus t by tc minus cos omega minus omega naught t e raised to power minus t by tc this whole quantity integral now we can split these quantities as well we can do that in integration e naught square 2 pi square 1 upon omega minus omega naught whole square tc now 0 to infinity e raised to power minus t by tc dt and minus 0 to infinity cos omega minus omega naught t e raised to power minus t by tc dt. Now we have these two different integrals. We can separate integrals like this only when we have plus or minus sign. Here as you can see we were having multiplied both these terms we were having product of these two terms and it is not possible to do that the moment we obtain subtract or addition terms when we obtain plus or minus terms then we can split the integrals we can solve this as it is this is simply integral of exponential term what do we get here we get e raised to power minus t by tc upon now what is the component as we are integrating with respect to t so the component of t is minus 1 by tc so here we get minus 1 by tc and then we have to put the limits as well and minus now this quantity let's name it as i because we have to solve it further first just substitute the values because for i we will do a separate calculations which is a complex one now e raised to power minus infinity anything multiplied by infinity is infinity and minus e raised to the power 0 upon minus 1 by tc this thing as it is and this i is there now what is e raised to power minus infinity we know e raised to power minus infinity is 0 and e raised to power 0 is 1. We are going to use this thing here 1 upon omega minus omega naught whole square tc and here we have 0 minus 1 upon minus 1 by tc okay, minus i. This is minus 1 and this is minus 1 this will get cancelled and now we have This whole quantity these will continue as it is and here we get tc minus i now we have to find this i this i we have to find our i is this quantity and now we have to solve this when we will obtain its value then we will substitute it here now let's start solving this integral cos of this into integral sorry exponent of minus t by tc you must have remembered or you must have studied a formula in integral whom we call it ilate but first come the integers or we have to solve 
like this whatsoever comes first so then logarithmic and then we come the uh, solve the algebraic expressions then come the trigonometric expressions and then comes the exponential expressions when we solve integration problems this is the formula that we often remember this tells us the hierarchy to whom we have to give first importance to whom we have to consider first function so according to this rule we should consider trigonometric quantities as first function and exponential as second but whenever we have in our integral just a trigonometric ratio which is just a single one no square nothing the single quantity it could be sine or cos and if we have just one another term which is exponent in that case we consider exponent as first function this is just the way we solve it otherwise in integration we follow this rule that first logarithmic and then algebraic then trigonometric then exponential whatsoever comes in this order will be considered as first function if, if we have these two then algebraic term would be considered as first function and trigonometric as second but this is only the exception when we have the expressions involving single exponent and single trigonometric ratio specifically sine or cos if there is sine or cos along with exponent then we consider our exponent as first function so here we are going to do that we will consider this as first function now let's see how do we write this so the integration of this would be first function as it is and integration of second function second function here is cos so that would be sine omega minus omega naught t upon the component of t because the integration is with respect to t so component of t so here we get omega minus omega naught this we have to put the limits okay so this whole term and then again with the minus sign 0 to infinity integration of second function that means again we will obtain this thing because this is the second function so integration of second function into differentiation of first function differentiation of first function so what would be its differentiation e the whole term as it is and then multiplied by component of t what is component of t here minus 1 by t c so we get minus 1 by t c e raised to the power minus t by t c and dt as well because still we have the integral sign here we have removed the integration this is how we proceed in integration uh, you must have remembered from your from your 12th class integration chapter now let's substitute the values here now e raised to the power minus infinity whatever is here no, doesn't matter what we are going to consider here is that e raised to the power minus infinity what is e raised for minus infinity that is 0 so 0 minus e raised to the power 0 sin 0 upon this thing let me just correct this this is basically sin 0 degree and what is sin 0 degree that is simply 0 so this term completely gets nullified this whole quantity is 0 now here whatever constant terms are there we have to bring them outside so here this is minus sign and here again minus sign so we can write plus here then tc is constant omega minus omega naught is constant so we can write tc omega minus omega naught and here 
0 to infinity sin omega minus omega naught t e raised to power minus t by pc dt. This is 0 plus 1 upon tc omega minus omega naught. Now again, again we will apply the same rule that here as I told if there is exponent and either sine or cos in the integral then we consider this exponent as first function. Again, we will apply the same rule, first function as it is and integration of second function. Okay, this is second function, this is first function. So, first function as it is, integration of second. Now, what is the integration of sine theta? It is minus cos theta. Sine t dt is minus cos t plus constant of integration. But usually in physics, we don't put constant of integrations after we are done with integration. We just ignore that value. So first function as it is, integration of second, that would give us minus cos omega minus omega naught t upon omega minus omega naught. Or what I can do is just I rub this. Again, we have to put the limits. 0 to infinity and minus. See, this is a big bracket. Let me make it big or I should make it with different color. This is a big bracket now. So, this we have done and then comes the minus integration of second function. That means integration of sine omega minus omega naught t which gives us minus cos omega minus omega naught t omega minus omega naught multiplied by the differentiation of first function. So again we have to write down the differentiation which is minus 1 by tc e raised to power minus t by tc dt. Okay, this is done and we are going to close this bracket. So, you can see that this term is getting multiplied with all this whatever is inside. Now we have 1 upon Tc omega minus omega naught. I will make this bracket with different color. Now again, let's substitute the values. So, E raised to minus infinity would again give us 0. I am not going to write this term as this is 0. So I am writing here 0 minus what is minus of cos 0 or what is cos 0 as we are going to substitute 0 now. So e raised to power 0 would give us 1 and cos 0 is again 1. Cos 0 degree is 1. So that means we will get 1 from here as well. And since there is negative sign, this negative sign is there. So, this is minus of 1 upon omega minus omega naught. And here, in this integral, just again bring the constant quantities outside. So, you can see here we have minus sign. Here we have minus sign and here again we have minus sign. So, three negative signs are there. That means we will have a negative sign here as well. And constant term is Tc and omega minus omega naught. So, 1 upon Tc omega minus omega naught and integration 0 to infinity cos omega minus omega naught T e raised to power minus t by tc dt and again I am going to close the bracket. Okay, now just open the brackets and just multiply this term with all these whatever are inside. As you can see here this minus minus would give us plus and 
nothing else we have here so we will get 1 upon pc omega minus omega naught whole square from these two terms and now we have to multiply these two terms which would give us minus 1 upon tc square omega minus omega naught whole square 0 to infinity cos omega minus omega naught t e raised power minus t by tc dt. Now, does this expression look like something? Well, yes. If you see here, just look at this expression i. This expression of i cos omega minus omega naught t e raised by minus t by tc dt and have a look at this expression cos omega minus omega naught t e raised by minus t by tc dt. That means this is the same thing. This is the same i integral that we started with this one. So then what can we do now is we can substitute i in here again because this is the same one. Same integral we have obtained again. We can write here 1 upon tc omega minus omega naught whole square and so now here if I'm not I haven't mentioned but this was i. Whatever we were solving this was i. See we are solving for i and here here all these steps these are for i and now here again I am going to substitute i because this is the same expression that we have obtained i. And this is the reason why whenever we have one exponential term and one trigonometric which is sine, sine or cos in the integral we always start with taking exponent as the first term. This is the reason because just after second step we obtain the first function as it is. First integral that we started with we obtain it as it is and then it becomes easier to solve the integration. This is the reason why we do that because here again we have obtained the same integral which we had in the beginning. Okay now what's the step just since both are i, we can bring this i to left hand side and this becomes i plus i upon tc square omega minus omega naught whole square is equal to 1 upon tc omega minus omega naught whole square. We can take the i common 1 plus 1 upon tc square. Now see. This is 1 upon tc square omega minus omega naught whole square. I can write this tc square as 1 upon tc square means one and the same thing. And here again we have the same expression. Now what we can do we can take the LCM. So omega minus omega naught whole square here would give us omega minus omega naught whole square plus 1 by tc whole square and brackets close and 1 upon tc omega minus omega naught whole square. And you can see this and this gets cancelled and what we are left with we are left with if we just cross multiply okay and cross multiplying what do we get we get i is equal to 1 upon tc omega minus omega naught whole square plus 1 by tc whole square. Okay, okay, this is the thing that we have obtained. So this is the expression for i now. We have removed all the integrations, all the integrals. We have just solved them and we have obtained for i. So we left here, we were here, we needed to find i, we had already found this value, we got to be tc 
but uh, we were stuck here we had to solve this whole integral and now we have solved and now i'm going to substitute this value of i what we have obtained here okay so now let's just do that from here by substituting the value of i in this and what is this expression this is i omega omega naught we were solving this thing now i'm going to substitute for i which is 1 upon tc omega minus omega naught whole square plus 1 by tc whole square this thing now again we have to solve this how we will solve this we will solve it by taking the lcm so e naught square 2 pi square and this is 1 upon pc omega minus omega naught whole square and now this is tc this is omega minus omega naught whole square plus 1 by tc whole square. Now here in the denominator we have 1. So this becomes tc square omega minus omega naught whole square plus 1 by tc whole square. This, are, this term is there and then minus this is the same thing we get one next i'm going to take this tc square common since tc square is getting multiplied only with this term and not with this but i am going to take this tc square as common from here okay so for that not square 2 pi square 1 upon tc omega minus omega naught whole square and if I take Tc square common, then here this term would be left, which is simply omega minus omega naught whole square plus 1 by Tc whole square minus, now this would be 1 by Tc square. Okay. Since we have taken Tc square as common. So this is this. And in the denominator, I have Pc omega minus omega naught whole square plus 1 by Pc whole square. So now I will multiply this Tc. In the numerator also we are having Pc square and in the denominator also we are having Pc square. So here Pc square. In here, omega minus omega naught whole square plus 1 by Tc whole square. And this is 1 upon Tc square. So, I can write it as 1 by Tc whole square. Okay, there is no problem in that. I can do that. And in the denominator, we are left with whole square plus 1 by Tc whole square. Now this Tc square gets cancelled with this Tc square and here this term gets cancelled with this term. Okay. And what do we have? We have E naught square 2 pi square 1 upon omega minus omega naught whole square. And in the numerator again we have omega minus omega naught whole square. And in the denominator we have omega minus omega naught whole square plus 1 by Tc whole square. Now this also gets cancelled with this and ultimately the value of I omega omega naught that we, we are left with is I omega omega naught is equal to E naught square upon, so now I am going to just play with these terms. I am going to write here pi square and this is basically 1 by 2. So, I am going to write it here. So, 1 by 2 upon omega minus omega naught whole square plus 1 by Tc whole square. So this is the final expression of intensity distribution I omega omega naught.
and now the next step is to find frequency distribution for frequency distribution all we need to do is that we just ignore the constant terms and here what are the constant quantities this this e naught square pi square half they all are constant quantities so we don't need it we will replace this by k where we consider that k is simply a constant we can write frequency distribution as obviously now g omega omega naught is equal to k upon omega minus omega naught whole square plus 1 by pc whole square k a constant okay so we are now concerned with only this denominator this is the term which is of importance here and now since we have written this g omega omega naught we have to apply the normalization condition so now you can see the steps that we are following are same as we did in normal bordering we found e omega omega naught we found i omega omega naught and then g omega omega naught and then we apply normalization condition to g omega omega naught which then provides us the final answer it's just that mathematics the integrations and the processes that are involved that takes time otherwise everything else is same so let's apply the normalization condition now what does it say this is minus infinity to plus infinity g omega omega naught v omega is equal to 1 this is a normalization condition so i can write here by applying normalization condition on substituting the value of g omega omega naught which we have recently found we get this what we can do now further we can take k which is a constant outside the integral and we can also take lcm here so it's minus infinity to plus infinity and here we have 1 omega minus omega naught whole square plus 1 by pc square d omega equals to 1 which further implies so here if we get pc square this becomes pc square omega minus omega naught whole square plus 1 and here we have 1 already that is equals to 1 and this becomes minus infinity to plus infinity so I can take this tc square in the numerator now tc square upon omega minus omega naught whole square tc square plus 1 b omega is equal to 1. Now still we have to do a bit of substitutions and the first one that we are doing is put this omega minus omega naught tc equals to x which further implies now if we are doing the integration with respect to omega so we have to keep in mind that which variable is involved for integration keeping that in mind if we take the derivative of this side what we will get see omega naught tc they both are constants so only omega will in, be involved in the differentiation process so that implies tc d omega because tc is again constant but omega is the one with respect to which integration is taking place so tc d omega is equal to dx which further implies that d omega is equal to dx by tc now we can substitute this here and as far as limits are concerned see if we put we are substituting this whole quantity as x and integration is with respect to omega so if omega is plus infinity x will be plus infinity and if omega is minus infinity x will be minus infinity there won't be any change because 
I mentioned earlier that uh, even if you subtract or add any other constant quantity to infinity, it will not change it. It will still remain the infinity. Okay, so all these doesn't matter. That means our limits would remain the same. Our limits are the same even after this substitution. So we get k minus infinity to plus infinity. Tc square is there. Here in the denominator, this whole term becomes x square plus 1. And what about d omega? d omega is dx by Tc. So this Tc would get cancelled with this. And we have 1 already here. So I can take the remaining Tc outside the integral because this is a constant quantity. Tc here in the denominator as well. Since Tc square is constant, it is already there in the numerator. For denominator, this term is, this particular term is x. So here, this is x square and plus 1. And d omega is dx by Tc. So this Tc gets cancelled with this. And still we have 1 Tc in the numerator. And since this is constant, so we can keep this out. We can bring this outside the integral. And we are left with dx upon x square plus 1. That is equal to 1 already. Now this is a very famous formula, integration formula, which says that if you have a situation like this, where something like this is there, the other quantity is 1 in the denominator, and whatever other variable is present, same variable is there for the integration. Like integration with respect to s, x is taking place. So here we have dx and same x square is in the denominator with 1. No other number but 1. This always gives us tan inverse x. And then we substitute the limits. So here we will get tan inverse x. So k t c tan inverse x and minus infinity to plus infinity again with these bars and that is equal to 1. And again we have that tan 90 degree is infinity. That means tan pi by 2 is infinity. So this implies that tan inverse of infinity would be pi by 2. Inverse trigonometric ratio. That means we can substitute here. We get KTC tan inverse infinity minus tan inverse minus infinity which is equals to 1. Also we have another formula which says that tan inverse of minus x is equal to minus tan inverse x. So we can use this thing here. KTC tan inverse infinity plus tan inverse infinity that is equals to 1. And KTC pi by 2 plus pi by 2 because 90 degrees pi by 2 that is equals to 1 and this gives in us ktc pi equals to 1. What is k? Because k is the thing. k comes out to be 1 upon pi tc. We took it as constant but now this constant has a value. So this implies that our g Omega, omega naught because what we were doing, we were normalizing this g. So now this g has a value which is here we left k upon this thing. Okay, So again here now I am going to mention the value of k. So k is 1 by pi tc and here again the same quantities. If we take the LCM, we get 
pc square omega minus omega naught whole square plus 1 so this becomes so this is 1 upon pi tc and this tc square is also there we will be left with this is the quantity and this tc gets cancelled with this tc and we are left with tc upon pi 1 plus omega minus omega naught whole square tc square this is the final value next step is again we have to find g omega omega naught maximum and we also have to find the frequency omega 1 for which this uh, intensity is half of the maximum intensity. Same step that we did in natural problem. Now we have to do that. As we know that g omega omega naught is the line shape function and we will obtain the maximum height of the line only at omega naught. So that means when our omega is equals to omega naught in that case we get the peak so this is basically g omega omega naught maximum all right that means when we substitute omega is equal to omega naught that will give us the maximum intensity that would be the peak let's do that so for omega is equal to omega naught, we have g omega omega naught maximum equals to. Here we can substitute this. If omega is equal to omega naught, that means this term becomes 0. And we are left with Tc by pi. That means we have Tc by pi. And now to find half width. For half width, that means we are talking about half the height of the peak. And we usually measure the spread at that portion. So if this is the maximum height, this is h. So we usually measure this, which is h by 2. And this is the quantity which gives us the spread, the line spread. And this is also known as FWHM, that is full width at half maximum. To find half width, G omega will be G omega omega naught maximum by 2. Here we can write omega naught also. And suppose omega 1 is the frequency for half width. So this implies g omega omega naught maximum by 2 is equal to. So if at omega 1 we have half width that means that value would be g omega omega naught maximum by 2. Because the height is half. As we have found g omega omega naught max as tc by pi. So this would be tc by pi and half of it. This will be half of this tc by pi. Because tc by pi is maximum value. And we are interested in half of the maximum value. So this becomes tc by 2 pi. So after all this is the value of a function. Let this function that I have written, let's uh, write it down as something else so that we can differentiate. Let this be g omega for half width. The function that we have is g omega so that we can easily differentiate. We are just naming it. So this is now tc by 2 pi. And what else do we know? We know that in general, the formula for G is this. This is the general formula. 
So we can write this formula for this g omega also. Because generally g omega is nothing but this value. So just write it down Tc upon pi 1 plus omega minus omega naught whole square Tc square. Since this g omega is for frequency omega 1 when the intensity is half of the maximum intensity. So here instead of omega I am going to write omega 1. That is the only difference. Now we have got two values of g omega as this is also g omega. Just by putting the values we have found this value. Just by substituting the half of g omega we know what is g omega omega naught max. And we are interested in half of this value. So this is Tc by 2 pi. We have obtained this numerical value. After all this is a complete number. And by general expression for g omega omega naught we obtain this. The only difference that I have now here written omega 1. Because we are interested in frequency omega 1 where we will obtain half of the maximum intensity. And that is the full width at half maximum that we are interested in that would give us the delta omega naught which is the line spread. So usually the line spread is always at half maximum, half of the maximum. So we study full width, whatever is the width, full width at half maximum. Now these two values are same, these two values. They are same, like not same that we can equate them since they both correspond to g omega. So if we equate them, what do we get? We get Tc upon 2 pi is equal to Tc upon pi 1 plus omega 1 minus omega naught whole square Tc square. This Tc gets cancelled, this pi gets cancel and we are left with now on cross multiplying we get 1 plus omega minus omega 1 minus omega naught whole square tc square is equal to 2 we can subtract 1 so we get this quantity is equal to 1 just make sure i'm just trying to avoid the use of space and that's why I'm just writing down quickly but make sure whenever you have such derivations your equal sign all the equal signs they should lie in same line similarly all these this implies you have to solve it the way it should look present table and this is one further Omega 1 minus omega naught whole square is 1 by Tc square. Now is the time we have to take the square root. So this is plus minus 1 by Tc. Why? Because square of a positive number is also a positive number and square of a negative number is also a positive number and that's why we when we are taking the square root, we have to mention both the signs. So, omega minus omega naught is plus minus 1 by Tc. That means one of the value is plus 1 by Tc and another value is minus 1 by Tc. We, we had considered omega 1 frequencies and we also know, because the same thing we obtain in natural broadening, that whenever we have this spread when we find this full width at half maximum basically this also corresponds to two frequencies which lie on both sides of the central frequency. So obviously whatever frequency is involved here that will be having two values one greater than omega naught and one lesser than omega naught. Thus we can mention that omega 
one dash is one by TC, one of the value, and another value is omega one double dash, which is minus one by TC. So what would be the spread delta omega? That would be simply the difference between the two. So it's one by TC minus minus one by TC, which gives us two by TC. So we have found the value of delta omega again here. This is the value for our line spread. Let's get back to TC. The average time of collision of gas molecules can be given by TC equals to mean free path upon mean velocity of molecules. After all, this is time. So time is distance upon velocity. So if this TC is the average time of collision, when collision happens, so mean free path is the path atom, if atom is going on, the path atom traverses before another atom comes and hit it. So this x would be the mean free path. It's the path atom travels before getting hit by another atom. And mean velocity of molecules means the velocity with which they are moving. So this is the expression for TC. Now according to Maxwell Boltzmann distribution law, because we are talking of gases in particular, and who else better deal with gases other than Maxwell Boltzmann distribution law? Maxwell Boltzmann's distribution law is particularly for molecules. This holds good for molecules, and here also we are talking of gas, and definitely they will be molecule. According to that, mean free path is there, and then there is something called mean velocity of molecules. So mean velocity is given by the formula is under root 8 kT by pi m. This is the mean velocity of gas molecules. We need to know mean free path and also the mean velocity of molecules if we want to determine the average time of collision. And this k is Boltzmann constant and m is the mass of molecule. Pi and t is the temperature Kelvin. 8 and pi, 8 is a number, pi is a constant. So this is the expression for mean velocity of gas molecules which we need to know. As we are talking of gases in particular, that's why we have used Maxwell Boltzmann distribution law which is which particularly holds good for molecules and mean free path. Now we need to know the mean free path as well. So that is kT upon 4 under root 2 then pi p a square. This is the for expression for mean free path of molecules or atom we can say. And this p is pressure of gas and a is radius of molecule. If we have these two terms then we can find out TC. We need to know mean free path and we need to know mean velocity of gas molecules. And we are dealing with molecules and we are using Maxwell Boltzmann distribution law. So now just substitute these two values. So TC is mean free path upon mean velocity. Mean free path divided by mean velocity. This gives us a t 4 root 2 pi p a square and then we have here pi m and here 8 k t. Now k t here is in square root and here as it is and then we have 8 in the root and here we have 4 root 2 pi here as it is and here. So on solving we get under root m k t by pi and 1 upon 16 p a square. This is TC. And now remember, we found 
this thing which is our spread so our spread is 2 by tc and we know what is tc that means the spread delta omega is 2 by tc so that is equal to 2 by tc is equal to 2 upon under root mkt by pi and 1 upon 16 pa square which further comes out to be 16 pa square upon under root mkt by pi that means this becomes 32 pa square upon under root mkt by pi this is the delta omega which is our line spread also this corresponds to angular frequency so if we have to find linear frequency we know that omega is equal to 2 pi nu so this implies that delta nu would be delta omega by 2 pi so if we have to find the linear frequency of this collision broadening then that would be 32 p a square upon under root m k t by pi and 1 by 2 pi as well so this would gives us this would give us 16 p a square this is the value that we obtain thus this is the frequency change that we will experience at half of the maximum intensity so if we know what is new naught then we can also know what would be the spread and see all these values we can obtain a proper value for that if we know the the radius of molecule if we know the pressure at which the gas is then 16 is the number pi we know if we know the mass of molecule then k is the boltzmann constant which has a fixed number fixed value and t also if the temperature is fixed by substituting all these values we can easily find what is delta nu we can easily find what would be the spread in frequency so one thing to remember here is that delta omega here comes out to be 2 by tc and in case of natural broadening this delta omega was gamma so it's just that damping factor gamma has been replaced by 2 by tc and tc is the collision time that is 2 by tc where this is for natural broadening and this one is for collision broadening so each and every factor has its meaning you can see that in natural broadening it's only and only the damping factor which is equals to delta omega that means damping factor results in the spread in frequency and here it's the collision time which is responsible you can say the average time between collision tc which is responsible for giving the desired spread the resulting spread not the desired one but the resulting spread so both in both the derivations we obtained the value for delta omega that was our main aim we started with e omega omega naught then we found i omega omega naught after that g omega omega naught then we provide the normalization condition we apply the normalization condition to that and after solving and doing all the integrations and substitutions we have obtained these two values so by this we are done with the derivation of collision broadening and now the third is left which is doppler broadening which is a part of inhomogeneous broadening so in the next upcoming video we will be doing that 
in one video we will discuss it and in another video we will try to solve the derivation and one more thing here that this factor 16 that might vary in some of the derivations like some people come up with number 8 but after all this number really doesn't matter that that won't result in much difference it's just that the formula that is being used by some might differ a bit some might consider diameter here and some might consider radius here so if that's the difference only then this number can change but otherwise if you follow this this is the exact one so you can obtain 16 p s square upon under root pi mkb that's all for today thank you Thank you.